Okay guys, welcome to a uh, poker game I just played. I'm Natty Lates as always, and that is the picture of me. Uh, this is a World Tour Tokyo. Um, I just played it a little bit ago. It's a multi-table, so uh, you will see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight other players. There are a total of nine players. These are the players. So I switched this up a little bit. Um, this is a strictly, um, video I'm making of, to just give tips on what I've learned from playing and how to win. Now, to make this a little bit more, uh, fair for the viewers, I covered everybody the best I could. So, I mean, if you look really hard, you can see their cards, but you really have to get in there to see it. So I did cover up everyone's cards, some better than others because of some just uh, fell through the game faster and I didn't see the point. I covered, everyone has uh, fake pictures except for one and I left their picture because number one it's not of a person, it's of an adorable, they're adorable dog. They're, this person's nice as can be, I don't have a single bad thing to say. They were a great player, and if you're watching this, I think you're awesome, and I love your dog. So that's why I think it's okay for that picture only, uh, because it's not a person. So it is a red board, because it is Tokyo, and uh, I guess let's get into the game. I am going to add some tips at the end of the game. I will also do commentary through it to try to help. Uh, Alright, let's get started with round one. Okay, I'm also going to try to talk loud so that uh, you guys can hear me. I know it's hard. Um, this is a little bit off. I have it leaning a certain way, and I don't really want to mess with it too much. Um, you will see their cards if it's like played through like a regular poker game. So you basically pretend that you're me, and um, that's how we will play. Uh, the uh, rounds, it's 1 through uh, 34 uh, blinds start at 10 and 20, and, um, alright, let's begin. As y'all know, I'm not a bluffer, so that is one technique that I want to say is important in poker. However, I do not follow that. I don't bluff. Rarely ever, so I'm just going to get that out there. That th is a good thing to do in poker, according to poker standards. Um, this first round, I'm going in here with um, a pair of 10s. I'm hoping I dulled out the screen so you could see the main cards in the middle. The Obviously, the five cards in the middle, and my cards. Um, so I did change the lighting on that intentionally. So... Basically, the first round is between me and Benz, the girl in the top left-hand corner. So, she just keeps betting, and, um, it's, like, pathetically. So, it's very clear that she's desperate to win with a pair of tens. I apologize for that. Um, so that's why I did go all in. I do not like going all in like that. However, I felt it was tens against tens and I had a possibility of a flush, which I did, um, succeed with. Okay, the hamster's running in her wheel in the background. The next hand, so I have, um, queens right there. One thing that they say is to bet, uh, which I don't do often as much as I should have. I did in this game, and I don't normally do well in uh, multiplayers. I'm better in um, not cash and go, but um, the the games where you're against you know four others. That that is my favorite sit and go. Uh, however. Um, to get to the next level, you do have to pass this one. You do have to win this one. Uh, 
I'm just removing our tape since I took her out already. There's no point of having it on my screen. I will be honest, and I had a lot of um, great hands. So, here again, I mean, you can't see anybody else's, I hope, because I did try to cover it the best that I could, but here again, I have a pair of jacks with a king, uh, so it was another easy one. So, they say that if you have a pair of jacks, well, they say if you have a pair of aces, kings, and queens, they're the top ones. And then the next one would be, like, ace, king, ace, queen, stuff like that. And then a pair of jacks, and so forth. So, I was uh, fairly confident with my pair of jacks, and decided to give it a shot. And then I did see a straight coming, so I wasn't too worried so far, because I had this straight. So, the only thing would have been... Um, an ace, um, but they would have needed a jack too. Keep in mind this is playback, so that's why I can see their cards, um, which is the question I get asked every time. Uh, here again, I have a pair of kings, but I also got the pair of threes, so... I had a lot of confidence again. I have to admit that normally I'm okay with like talking to people and stuff through the game. This game I played almost every hand and won almost every hand and was was very hard um keeping up with some of them. Some of the replies. So, pre-flop, raise, but I had a Jack King, uh, same suit. I had now a pair of Kings, so I kind of could not put this hand down either. They say another great tip is patience, uh, which I normally have. And that is one thing that I do well with. That and slow playing, which I didn't really have to do much of here because this one was sad for me. I didn't want this person to go, but I mean, they had nothing. I see two tapes, but I can't really get to them because they're <laughs> too far away. And I'll have to cross over it too, and it'll mess up the game for what you guys see. But again, they s I have a King Jack, and they say, you know, be best ones are the... Pocket aces, kings, queens, jacks, ace, king, queen, jack, king, jack, all those are their top ones, which I never go by. However, I was watching last night um, a high stakes poker match, and it seemed that everybody just seems to go by that, and automatically, if you have an ace, king, you just deserve to win, which I never agree on, because that's the one thing I do hate about poker. I get that it's a part of poker, I just don't see the point, because you're not doing anything. You're just landing with <laughs> an ace-king. It's not anything that great, but, um, like, I'd rather make the full house, even if it's with lower numbers, but... This one would have been one that I could have played. I'm very glad I did not. It was a tough one. I had a pair of queens and a pair of sevens, but I would have lost to a pair of queens and a pair of nines. So I'm very glad that I controlled myself for that one. I am so far ahead here. I'm almost at 5,000, and the next highest person is almost 2,000. Everybody else is um, 800. 700, 300 areas, so, and we're only at 11 out of 34 hands, 
had a straight there. But you have to be careful with the straights because you got those flushes out there. You have um, a full house, which are very common ones that have beaten me in the past with straights. So this one, again, I'm relying on the fact that I have top pair on the board plus an ace to back me up. Everyone folds. Um, I did look back at this game somewhat, and every time everyone folded, they did the right thing, actually. Uh, I had the best hand, so I just had a lot of good hands. This round, I think it was, I decided to take a break. I literally needed a break from playing every round. As crazy as that sounds. I was so far ahead, too, that I didn't want to start messing it up um, with getting overconfident, which you also is another rule that you have to watch out for. I may run out of tape. Um, if I do, I have the computer nearby, and I will switch out the uh, card. So again, ace, ten, both of diamonds, that's like a high one uh, that you want to play. This board was tricky with a king, two queens, and an ace. However, with the way people were betting, I was very confident that I had the top pair Nine six, and I think a nine. I apologize. I should have put the phone away. Um, but I will write down uh the numbers. But those are like the worst hands to play. I know that the seven two is always viewed as uh very bad. And a lot of people even bet that people cannot play that hand. And uh, you'll see it all the time on poker games, like real poker games. And they make the side bets with the 7-2 that you can't, at the beginning of the game, that somebody gets it. And they have to uh, bluff their way and win. Here's a 7-2 right as we're talking about it, which is weird because I did not remember that. So they say that if you have a king and a low card, um, not to play it. Normally I would, but again, I was really far ahead and I felt like at this point I wanted some other people to battle it out and not just be me. So getting rid of this other person on the far left made it easier. Keep in mind, only the last two people get a prize. So, first prize is a ticket to that Macu, the game that I'm always playing. 
the important one is a ticket to that for free, which is a very expensive game to play. And second prize is to play this round again. So free ticket to this round. It's very easy for me, the way that my TV is set up, for me to sneak over and grab the stickers from the left-hand side. It's really hard to get to the right-hand side because there is no way around. It's a wall. So I apologize for the ones that you can still see, if you can still see them. So we're at 24 out of 34 hands. We only need to get rid of one more person and then we're both winners. I wanted this even though it's just a ticket to the next round, which you can also buy into. Uh, and I do it a lot because it's now my new favorite uh, round, but I really want this. I felt like I deserved it. I was at like 5,000 through this whole game. But unfortunately, there was nobody really, like, that I was rooting against. This was a pretty good group of people. If anything, they're probably rooting against me, but I always try to be very polite and poker etiquette. Um, because if you can't do that, then, I, I mean, that makes you a bad poker player, just in general. Okay, we're now at 27 out of 34 hands. Um, like I said, I ran out of tape right at this spot, so I'm replaying from here. This hand didn't involve me, however, it guaranteed me a final two. So it's now down to me and the person next to me. I'm starting to not feel so great because I had such a good lead and for somebody that was pretty far behind the entire game, all of a sudden out of nowhere just like caught up. And even though they were a nice person, I felt like I did all the work for them to win, kind of. Like, they sat back and just kind of waited. But I'm not saying anything bad about them, because, like, that's their, that's their way of playing. Obviously, they were good to make it to the end, and to have that much patience to not play all those hands, but at the same time, I feel like you can't just let somebody carry you there. I don't know why I even hesitated here. This should have been such an easy fold. I had nothing to lose by folding that it was the fact that it was ace of clubs, king of clubs, queen of clubs. It was just stuck in my head. So that was just stupid. But I made the right decision, so it didn't matter. So at this point, I'm just folding a lot. This one, I even just gave them the straight up $100. Didn't care. Um, and waited it out. So this is the last hand. I was very confident because it's going by the books, which I just got done reading about. The 10 Jack of Hearts is a good hand to play. I had a pair of Jacks, so at least I had something. He got so aggressive that I felt like they were desperate. And I was correct. He had a king and felt that he should automatically win it because he had a king. Um, he then quit the game, which did not matter. He only had $160. I had 8840 So this is how I won the game. I will now also add some tips that I um, would like to share with you guys.